Fortescue. I've always had my doubts about you, Fortescue. You're just not tough from hero material. Run, little man. <laughs> Dalamir is doomed. Only a true hero is worthy of a place in the Hall of Heroes. Necropolis. <laughs> to take the realm. So Daniel Fortescue led the militia in the battle against this unholy horde. Fortescue went down in history that day as the hero of Galamir. And then the sorcerer returned. Fate has given it a second chance. A chance to defeat Zarok. <laughs> Chance to forget the ignoble truth and live up to the legend. <laughs> Bonehead's Guide to Galamere, Volume 4, Filling One's Chalice. 
Any good legend has its share of challenges, and the Chalice of Souls is no different. What's the Chalice of Souls, you ask? Why, only one of the most powerful relics in all of Galamir. Now, not so fast. You didn't think it would be that easy, did you? Every bad soul you vanquish will help you fill the chalice, and once full, will earn you a hero's reward. But be careful, not all souls you encounter are bad. And any mistakes can really cost you. So go out there and fill that chalice, and maybe one day they'll make a statue of you too. Oh. A Bonehead's Guide to Galamir, Volume 3. Maximizing one's offense. Any self-respecting knight knows that every weapon requires the utmost skill to properly dispatch one's foes. But for those troubling instances, perhaps you should try an alternate approach. Did you know that there's more than one way to use each weapon? Huh? That's right. Some of them are useful for crowd control, some have a lot more impact, and some are, well, not that different, I suppose. Of course, there are weapons that are better suited to certain situations, and others that, well, I'm not quite sure why you'd do that, actually. Just make sure to hang on to your weapon. You never know what might happen to it. Well, after him, those are expensive. A Bonehead's Guide to Galamir, Volume 2, Changing One's Perspective. Any sweeping adventure is bound to contain a variety of interesting sights to take in. Unfortunately for you, you've only got one eye. Can't find the key to a door? Tired of looking at the top of your enemies' heads? Feel like your view is stuck in the past? Perhaps it's time to shift your perspective with what we call the Dan Cam. I wonder what weirdo that's named after. Ah, look how pleasant everything seems from this angle. You can see enemies coming from a mile away. There's that key. Everything seems so different from this perspective. These places. Those enemies, even your allies. <laughs> okay, maybe it's a good thing you only have one eye. However you look at it, you'll probably need all the help you can get. <laughs> good luck, hero. I think one of the challenges to resurrecting a game like Medieval, uh, you, you, you go back to the original game like we did at the beginning of this, you go back to it and you look at it. You don't want to deliver like, the per like an exact replica of that original game. Right. You want to deliver the game that people remember playing. And so what we want to do is like, instead of going back and recreating that perfectly, we want to recreate what you remember about that game and right. what you took away from that game. Well, there's also the, uh, I mean, we, we have uh, access to the original source code, right? So, and we can see in there that they had intents uh, to, to take the game even further, or uh, like there's boss battles in there that have states uh, that we, just not in the final game that they were working on and then were commented out. So we can see what their artistic design was or what they were trying to go after. And one of the most important aspects of doing that is really walking in the shoes of the original creators. Yeah. So that's why it's almost like a, an archeological project where you're, you're, you're kind of digging up all this material. Yeah. You're talking to the original team. You're trying to find out exactly what they were thinking, what they were feeling at the time. And you use that as a way to springboard into the new direction you want to take the game and, and the presentation and, and the feel and the mechanics. Yeah, enemies in particular were uh, a huge challenge. Um, there are, you know, 56 different enemy types, um, which, you know, by today's standards, you go even, even you know, large AAA games don't have that, that variety of characters. 
The one thing that stands out to me about Medieval that I still remember today was when I first got to the time device level, mm -hmm. which is this crazy level that has brains, trains, and clockwork parts, and it was just this bizarre change of pace in the game that just felt like it belonged as much as it didn't. And I really enjoyed that part of the game. And, and I, I, in fact, like that level kind of opened my eyes up to, uh, to that kind of design where you can just throw that weird left hook that nobody's expecting and take people on this like totally different path in a game. And that, that one was hands down my favorite part of the game. The Hall of Heroes is probably my favorite place in the game uh, because it, it's, it's uh, something that alludes to a larger world that Dan lives in. And, and that world is everywhere. Uh, you know, it, you, you can feel it everywhere. It's the way the characters are written, uh, the, the personalities involved. And there's just a, a ton of charm there that makes you want to spend time in that world. And I think, ultimately, I think that's one of the reasons why it has endured for 20 years. Uh, you know, why, why people today are just such huge fans of it um, is because those characters they created. Um, Dan is an amazing character. And, you know, all of this, this cast of characters of all these heroes that come from different lands and uh, they all have something to say about Dan and his position in the world. Um, I, I think really that, that to me is really, you know, having the ability to go in and interpret that and sort of uh, build out this world and artistically was, was really probably been the most fun part of this entire thing. It's, it's like they built something new on the bones of the original. Ooh, oh, it's, they man. Really, they like that? fleshed out well, the experience. I've been Aha. living in skeleton puns for about a year and a half, <laughs> and even that so got me. <laughs> <laughs>Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of PlayStation Underground. You got Tim and Justin here. Hey. We are joined by Nick Accardino, producer on Medieval, um, right. the remake of Medieval for PlayStation 4. That's this right. Uh, we got Justin show. on the controls there. Um, we are at the first. Asylum Grounds. Is that right, Nick? That's right. T We're about halfway through the game. Halfway, okay, gotcha. Um, what Medieval can you say? has this kind of interesting uh, open-ended structure where this could be either like the 7th or the 10th level, I think, okay. we go to. Um, but definitely a very luscious green area we wanted to show off. As um, I can see, and we're also going to jump back and forth a little bit to the 1998 PlayStation original to, to show just how lush and green and, and like, I don't know, come to life oh boy. this version of the game is. That's I got a little right. bold there. That's right. Let's see if I can make this work. Justin's <gasps> fighting some mad monks over here. We saw the hedge dragon a little bit earlier. Yeah. Staring at him. Um, yeah, definitely some unique gameplay. Uh, combat's just kind of loose, but that's exactly how it was on PS1 as well. And we yeah. wanted to really keep that same feel. Um, Sir Dan, a little bit of a bumbling knight over here, not too precise with his uh, with his his sword play. That's, a, that's nice one one nice thing I really like his crossbow that play. you've pointed out here is that you know he's he's kind of like flailing to, to victory <laughs> almost despite himself in some cases which kind of loops in with his his character right yeah like, yeah um, he's like uh, the head of, of the king's like night guard he dies from the first arrow through the eye uh, in the battle he's in brutal um, kind of immediately, um, but is hailed as this hero, gets buried as a hero, and then gets accidentally resurrected by um, Zarok the Sorcerer. What a run. Yeah, so, <laughs> so but like all the people that, that knew him know that he was just kind of like a, a bumbling character, so they constantly, you know, give him crap as he plays through the, as you play through the game, and it's really funny, the sense of humor in Medieval is, is great. Very British, but very endearing. I'm into that. Greetings, so forth. Oh, who have we got here? My name is Jack of the Green. Good That's old who Jack. We got I here. am the master of riddles, and this may be master of favorite. riddles. You say? Ooh. Ooh. But only and Dan's just kind of looking around, not even paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> What's up there? I love that he spins his head all the way around. <laughs> yeah. 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 So take, <laughs> keep your head on a swivel. He takes right. it to a, a yeah. extreme <laughs> degree. <laughs> but you know, what would a hedge maze be without, of course, a uh, you know a master of riddles to make it even more interesting? Right. Check out the, the stop motion animation going on with his face, too. That's so cool. I love that. Yeah, the, the team at Other Ocean um, and Secret Six did an amazing job at bringing this game to life. And there's perhaps no better way to fully appreciate, um, you know, just the beginning section of Asylum Grounds here than let's jump back to the 1998 original just to see what it looked like back then. Totally. So, you know, similarly, we're at the gates, and the approach is like the, the pieces are here. Yeah. Uh, but boy, much simpler piece. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like 
I don't, I don't even know. It looks like a toy, you know? Like. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting because it's like the enemy placement is very faithful. The the shape of the... Um, I'm noticing now that like the shape of the hedges are actually the dragon, like... Yeah, the dragon. Uh, swooping uh, through the ground, which is yeah, really yeah. clever. I didn't notice that. There's, uh, there is a lot of clever design going on. Uh -huh. um, and it does. It feels. It feels. Feels very similar to what I just played. Like I feel. I feel like I just played this because they've done such a good job at just kind of keeping it true to the source material. And that was the goal to, to make the game feel exactly like as it did, but to have it look kind of how your memory, you know, preserved it. You know, not as it actually is. And speaking of that, uh, this voice sounds familiar as well. Yeah, um, all the voice acting in the game, um, save for our new narrator, uh, voiced by Lonnie Manella, is exactly the same. That, that beautiful CD quality, quality audio from PS1 intact fully here um, sounds amazing. So Jack of the Green sounds exactly the same. Zarok sounds exactly the same. Without All the characters sense. just really have um, that same lost. personality just Without brought to life in, in 4K now, which what is lovely. One of the benefits of the original PlayStation being on the cutting edge of uh, CD audio you technology, know right? Absolutely. Uh, well, let's jump back then to uh, 2019's Medieval. Uh, man, it's a really just a dramatic contrast uh, <laughs> to jump back in here. Like, both... Oh, and, and uh, another thing I'm noticing, too, as we're jumping back and forth is that, you know, as you go further into the hedge maze and it clicks into sort of a, a top-down perspective, um, I'm appreciating the new camera controls that you have yeah. here. Yeah, you can actually move the camera around yeah. now. Yeah, how about that? Oh, no. Um, and another thing I really like, let me back out of the hedge maze here so it works properly, but if you hold L2, it goes into this cool, like, over-the-shoulder oh, yeah, camera. that's the Dan cam. The Dan cam. The Dan, Dan cam. cam. Oh, yeah. I love it. That is Dan Cam. And you can you can fight like that. It's really helpful for long range attacks. So when you're using oh, that crossbow, yeah, yeah, yeah. throwing knives, um, just it helps you immerse, you know, be immersed in the world. That's this you'll see this mad monk just summoned all these other monks around you. Oh, goodness. I was trying to get to him before he could pull that could off. Could do that, yeah. Sometimes you can. Yeah, Justin, I think you've taken to the controls pretty well here. Like you're you're, getting you're, there. you're crowd managing pretty well here. I'll admit um, two things. The first thing is that I uh, never actually played the original Medieval back then, so I'm not uh, exactly an expert. The second is that I did get a little bit of a test run uh, before we started recording here, so I've got a decent handle on the controls here. Yeah, but um, it feels great to play. But the game's also not easy, right? It's um, not. You're constantly taking damage. Yeah. You're making good use of your shield. As you can see, the UI up there has oh, your health and I'm not making good use of my shield. Well, oh, yeah. you, you, you will. You're at full 250, yeah, there we go. 235. Uh, it's sort of like a durability meter in a yeah. way. Okay. But to, to kind of just um, express the point, um, there's no, um, there are no like save points in the middle of the stages. There's no, um, you know, easy checkpoints. Oh, so, so you got to get it in one go. In one go. Yeah. Got if, it. if you die, if you make it to like almost the end of the stage and you die, you're doing the whole stage over again. Wow. Um, which is... That's classic. <laughs> classic. Yeah. <laughs> That's also classic, Justin, just doing that for attention. Justin. We hear, we hear you, Justin. Very good, good job. Yeah. You did it. There's no trophy for that, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> when I go to the hotel, I go ding, 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 yeah. ding, ding. <laughs> You know, you got to make sure everyone knows you're there. Of course. Um, of but course, yeah. check any any holes in the ground in any video game. That's how, how we do. I mean, naturally. Yeah, if, if you're into, like, classic, like, challenge, though, I mean, Medieval's got it in spades. That's what I was going to say. Uh, it reminds me of No pun intended time. that we are in, you know, we're just coming out of the grave. The garden. Uh, <laughs> the garden. But, yeah, it reminds me, you know, I played this game back in, in 98, but I was definitely not skilled enough to get this far in, and I, I, I think I probably was not meeting the game on its own level because it's actually pretty, you know, demanding and, and Justin's using his shield and his uh, charge attack and you also have like some secondary abilities and you really got to use the full artillery to make it through. That's right. That's right. Or at least that's the easiest way. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there's a, a super satisfying loop in Medieval um, of going into these stages, fighting off the enemies, filling this chalice. You'll notice, see the up in the right-hand oh, corner? Oh, sure. Um, you're filling a chalice right now. Once you're at 100% by defeating a bunch of enemies, you can turn that into the Hall of Heroes. Okay. And they'll give you either a new weapon or an upgrade to Dan, maybe another life bottle. Um, and that is what is going to help you progress through the game. Like, some of these bosses really require some of the better weapons. Okay. Or else you're just going to be really struggling. So, um... Go try a stage. If you can't do it, go collect a chalice, get upgraded, come back, you know, and just rinse and repeat. Okay, so Sir know? Dan has some persistent upgrades that, like, if you're just getting your, your you know, your bony butt handed to you, Absolutely. you can come back a little bit later. Absolutely. Oh. 
Nice way to find them all there, Justin. Well I did it. But my star riddle was but a there trifle. Goes, you again. Oh, that was just a trifle, Justin. One. Sorry to say it. I'm going to start saying return so hither whenever I need Justin now. <laughs> He's going to come up and ring the bell 50 See, times. That's right. <laughs> uh, do we want to take a look at the uh, the hedge maze so go from the original? Yeah, let's take a look oh, yeah. at uh, what this looked like in the, the original game a little bit. So we're revisiting the area that, uh, you know, Justin just visited with the, the bell there and seeing, like, again, uh, functionally, mechanically, design-wise, like, similar Sim layout. Yeah, yeah. same thing. Yeah, we want it to be the game you remember. Um, just... With Even that that little coin purse in the in <laughs> yep. the same yeah. hole there, yeah, Absolutely. The same grave. Absolutely, the, you know, the kind of the goal here was that if you had a strategy guide for the original PS1 game and you sat it down next to you, you could use it for the PS4. Game. Oh, nice! You know, that's how I love one, that. That's how one to one we but wanted it to be, and I think we've really succeeded like uh, in that regard. So we're really excited Return to see people dig into it to, to kind of like relive season. the adventure or to just jump into it in in the first place because this really is one of the most bizarre but beautifully bizarre games, I think, um, to ever come out of so Beautifully it's bizarre. Awesome. Beautifully bizarre. Let's, yep. let's click back into I the uh, Beautifully Bizarre remake. Yep. So we have just been slightly trifled and are going back to uh, Jack of Greens. Good old Jack of Greens. Yeah. Let's use that cinematic Dan cam. Ooh, looks good. Yeah, it is a, that is a good way just to get a closer look at all the, yeah. the new character models. Without it, I am nothing. It is beautiful. Oh. Without it, I am nothing. I wonder what that could be. Hmm. Uh, and then now, is there, are there new areas in the hedge maze that have opened up now that? Possibly. Okay, let's maybe, take a look. Maybe a, maybe a, let's find out. Maybe a puzzle for you. Ooh. Go past that a little bit. Ah, look, Here we go. Guy hiding over there. <laughs> He's chasing after you. <laughs> so, um... Nick, being in the world of medieval for so long, just you know, having having worked on the game for a while and immersed yourself in it, like, what have you come to sort of notice anything about like late '90s, you know, game design or just like the sensibilities of, of 3D gaming from this era? Oh yeah, um, good question. There's a a lot of that stuff. So you'll notice in the PS1 games sometimes, like, the draw distance is, is very is very close up to you. Yeah. Um, and there's certain camera angles that are fixed for a reason. Oh okay. Um, you know, there, there's parts of this game where we try to give you as much camera control as possible. Okay. Show but the there's reasons sometimes why they look at what you can see and what you can do. Because like in this case it might, you know, focus you in on the puzzle and you might see like, oh this view I can see, you know, three or five masks or whatever. Exactly. Um, exactly. And you know the more you try to like update things or change things sometimes, the more you might see, oh, they did it for a particular reason. Yeah. Uh, and for a game as, as diverse um, and varied as medieval is, sometimes it took a while to really find out what that uh, rationale was. Okay. But believe you me, it was always there. Um, so we came to the decision that we just had to leave a lot of stuff as it was. Okay. Um, but, you know, there were a lot of things that we could do. Obviously, UI updates. We reorchestrated the, the entire soundtrack. Yeah, it sounds great. Um, you know, we've added voice acting here and there as well, um, and then we've given you as much camera control as we as we possibly can to give you you know a new look at everything here. So it's great. Um, Speaking of new look, uh, Justin's trying to give these speak these very look. sad nice. uh, masks. What are the theater masks? I can't remember the drama. Uh, you know, sad happy ones. Uh, <laughs> he's he's trying to he's trying to get them all presu presumably to face the clown, the happy right. sides of it. Um, oh, and he's done it. Yes, look, look at that. You know exactly what you're doing. Heaven, I'm sure. Return in Congratulations, Justin. <laughs> Thank I you. To see I'm very happy, as you can tell. You uh, let's take a quick peek at what that looked like uh, back in 1998. Okay, again, uh, so it's like, it's, it's interesting. It's making me appreciate that the remake really helps fit all the pieces into the world. Like, these, uh, these masks really stick out. Yeah. Um, but... It's it's like they built something new on the bones of the original. Ooh. Oh, that's, they man. Really they like that? fleshed out well, the experience. I've been uh -huh. living in skeleton puns for about a year and a half, <laughs> and even that got me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, just a quick uh, it was just a quick glimpse at what that um, the sort of like uh, I guess the desire for the the you know praise of the crowd that that puzzle looks like yeah. uh, back in 1998. So we can jump back into uh, the remake here. Pick right back up. 
I hope you guys can hear this a little bit. When uh, when Dan's actually charging his weapon or doing lots of things, you can actually hear these new efforts that we have um, from Jason Wilson, the original voice actor of Dan. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah, this nice new... Yeah, he's yells. surprisingly expressive he for, is. you know, not even really being able to form words. <laughs> um, yeah, yep. you, you said that it's the original the original voice actor for Dan came back and recorded some new stuff, right? Yes, he did. And uh, famously, he recorded his original lines uh, for Dan with a bucket on his head. <laughs> um, and when we asked him to come back, he asked us if we, he should bring the bucket. And I was like, of course you should like the, bring the bucket. Yeah, the same it, bucket? It, it has Does he have it like in, a, in, a, in his garage somewhere? It's on a shrine. It hasn't been cleaned once. <laughs> I just I love it. He just so much so much love and enthusiasm for the character though that um, he wanted to bring the bucket back. Yeah, it works well. I mean, I, I imagine there's some challenge with uh, bringing a character that has no no lower jaw, you know, back to you know bringing a sort of expressive vocal to him. Yeah. I really love what they've done with with his face, the animation. Yep. It's has. so good. There's a lot of that. You know, we have these little fairies in a different stage that are like the, they look like little like little bald like pork uh, pot bellied like fairies <laughs> they look really okay. like, really silly but the way they're animated now looks astounding like, can i pet the cat nick tell me i can pet the oh, cat oh man i wish oh man sounds like another addition you guys i mean well the cat, yeah. the cat doesn't attack you so that that's enough okay right? that's fair they that's also fair. you know cats let you know when they want to be pet and i think the <laughs> ominous glowing Red eyes are maybe yeah. indication that they. I just found out that I cannot hurt the cat, so that's uh, that's good. That's, that that's makes good. me feel better, because uh, they are they are perfect children. They're, they're purring. They, yeah. they know what you're doing. They're having a good time. Uh, by the way, Nick, thanks for hooking me up with all these extra life bottles uh, so <laughs> before you're, we started. You're welcome. Uh, I am working with a little bit of a handicap here to, so that I don't die and have to. Start you're doing this great one. though. Uh, you only lost two bottles so far. There went that guy. Yeah. Um, get in there. So what are we working with so far? We got cats. Yeah. We got a giant elephant um, sort of edge design there. Yep. Mad what, Monk is what's our what's our riddle again? It's um, uh, oh some, goodness, something to do with I forgot. Fear, being afraid of something. Yeah. Oh, hello. Well, here's a little merchant gargoyle. Oh, All right, to chop your coins here. down. Okay. Yeah. Buy some uh, buy some crossbow bolts. Yeah. Make sure that enters. Yeah. Delicious. He loves nice. to eat your coins. That's fun. Anytime I owe Justin and give him back his money, this is exactly how it goes. <laughs> he just That's another it. great animation. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's, yeah, him just chomping down on him. Yeah, we love it. So, well, so yeah, let's. So that's the um, that's the Chalice of Souls. Remember, I was telling you before. There's like this awesome loop about collecting the chalice, getting upgraded. Yeah. That's where you would collect it after you hit that hundred percent. Um, so maybe you can grab that a little bit later. Uh, but for now, you gotta go find uh, maybe what can help you solve this new puzzle. Yeah. What could it possibly be? What could it's it something be? Something to do with elephants. Maybe some peanuts? I don't know. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> peanuts are really good. Uh, elephants love peanuts. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Like a, like a unicycle? <laughs> uh, but I don't know. Find that clown Not that way. Yeah. Oh. Take a look. At, you it know, is a maze. There are some uh, monks around here a little bit. Oh, there we yeah, go. Well, they came might. out of a new spot. Yeah. New pathway. Yeah, Jack's been opening up some new spots for you here as you're solving okay. these riddles. All the clever, clever. The, bread, the very ugly breadcrumb trail. Yeah. You don't might want to be careful up here. Yeah. Oh, hello. <laughs> it's like a like a fish. Nice. C get a Dan cam on that. Let's let's take a, a good look at. Oh. It. Oh. Okay. That hurt. There he oh, is. Oh, cool. Yeah, so what, what is this? What like, is like, an like an octopus Like an octopus. Or a squid? With yeah. A, okay, I Squids like Squids have beaks, right? Yep. Yeah, why not? I just, yeah, just pluck yeah, away at him from back here? Pluck him away. Yeah, it's good to stay safe. Yeah, use your full uh, arsenal. It's at your disposal here. Is this like a is it fish design that I'm seeing? Yeah. Determine what. <laughs> okay, that oh, was coming handy. Smacks I wanted to try and like be a little more. No, no, you've, you've got some good health. You can, you can, you can do that. Oh, cool. yeah, you hit them all at once. Yeah, How is the shield against this guy? Yeah, don't forget to have a shield if you got it. Oh, okay, down to one. Okay, yeah, that was a bad idea. Oh, there yeah, you go. Keep it a little bit more. Oh, and I can get that, yeah, too. Yeah, get the head. Let's He's the, the one that, like, shoots sh sh over. There you go. Good nice. night. He's out. And yeah, that Dan camp comes in handy. It yeah, does. that was that was like very you revealing. You can see if you go back, did you see that lovely asylum in back there when you were looking at that at the head? Oh, let's take oh a yeah, look. I mean, I suppose touches like that are things that just really wouldn't have been part of the equation in the in the original. Yeah, do you, you see it back up yeah, there? Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah, that's that's it. Helps kind of put the this area within 
the wider world and, and yeah. kind of give it a sense of place. It's gorgeous. So now you got a book. Was that a book? Or that was, was a Chaos Rune. Chaos Rune, sorry. Chaos Rune. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I, I know where that goes. Oh, yeah. Justin's on the case. Yeah, all, all the little touches in this game, you know, there was so much to work with. I think in one of our developer interviews, we ta they talked about 56 different enemy types. Wow. You know, some of which appear in the game once, you know, in, in just in different spots. Um, oh, there you go. It's, it's speaking of, you know, there's a little, like, NPC that's about to make its make its way here when you walk forward a little bit. That's oh, nice. an important... See peeking out there? Yeah, hello. Oh. Hey, buddy. Uh, hey, he's happy, oh, I made he's a happy, friend. To, happy to see you. Yeah, a little, little rat buddy. Now okay. your your job is to just uh, try and get him. Past yeah, these get him, get him. Uh, little hungry get him. guys over oh, here. Oh, I see what's happening here. Okay. Uh, oh boy. Okay. <laughs> now if I if if these I'll cats you. these cats are actually reacting to how I think my cats would if they saw a mouse, which is just total indifference <laughs> uh, and and not earning their rent at all. But um, I'm yeah. glad that you guys are a little generous with the kind of the stealth patterns here. Yeah, of course, you know. The really funny, funny story about this this rat is that he was one of the first AI pieces that we put into this remake. Um, so I have a, a, a lot of fondness for him. <laughs> he was around like you know before uh -oh. anything no, else. No, 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 no. I mean, oh. it, he's your he's your, your, your test rat, he's your buddy. Yeah. 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 Spot, my bluff. And he actually just made that uh, that, that hedge elephant hard, open up a new spot for you. Nice. An That's great. So this time, however, I almost pity you. The um, so yeah, you found you solved the riddle. I'm impressed. Uh, let's take a look and see what that that. Um, puzzle looked like uh, in 1998. I kind of want to take a peek. Okay, so yeah, let's let's pick up. He's got the the chaos rune and, oh, and there's your little buddy. There we is. got the the rat again. <laughs> Slightly more detailed than the 2019 <laughs> version of the game. Yeah, uh, maybe. You know, you know, and the cats, the cats look like big rats too. Yeah, they do. There, there's a there's a there's a greater <laughs> cat variety um, in. In the uh, the, the oh. remake, which I appreciate, oh. and he's just kind of wigging out. Uh, yep. oh. He's not having it. Doesn't, oh, doesn't know what's happening there. That's uh, it. Didn't work out for him, but thankfully he's got a brother or uh. a sister. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it is the same little rat. He yeah. just doesn't this quite know what oh, he's, he's doing. Oh, it's it is canonically the same rat. <laughs> yes, yeah, okay. same rat. <laughs> I know that's the important. Uh, you know, no rats were harmed in the making of this gameplay <laughs> video. <laughs> uh, oh, those two cats are. Moving in, in unison there. Yeah, the original escort quest guys right here. I like it. <laughs> I think this is so. <laughs> this is pretty tolerable in terms of escort quests. Yeah, this is uh, this is really clever. Um, what I what I what I'm especially charmed by with this this little section is that it's like just such a detour yeah. from what you've been doing for the entire level. Uh, it's so severely 90s in that way <laughs> that I I love it. <laughs> oh, and he kind of reared up and actually destroyed the uh, the path behind him. Time, okay. However, well, speaking of that path, let's uh, let's jump back in into the remake and Enigma. explore Has a little bit further. Let's see what awaits. Oh, hello! An angry guy awaits. Quite the rude. Oh goodness. Okay. Rude welcome there. Let's, uh, let's put some space between us and our attacker here. So, if I understand the uh, check out some other web. The overarching story. This is about halfway through the game, and uh, the main baddie is, is Zarok. Zarok. Is that yep, right? that's his name. Yeah. What can you tell us about Zarok? Oh, he's just trying to he's trying to take over Galamir. Um, he was thwarted by by Dan and his and his knights um, in the original battle, um, and he finally has the ability to resurrect the dead. Okay. So he does so at the beginning of this. He he resurrects all these zombies. All these creatures um, takes over like kind of um, hypnotizes all the townspeople and in, in by so doing uh, come on I see you resurrects Dan <laughs> as well boom oh nice that's nice <laughs> it um, so yeah he has sort of in trying to sow the seeds of his own domination he has also un undone undone them potentially yeah. if the player can get Dan all the way through definitely uh, definitely and you know uh, Dan runs into a lot of people from his past it's been quite a while. I think it's been about a hundred years. Is that all? Um, <laughs> oh, now you can grab that chalice if you ever, if you ever give. Oh, back excellent! There. Actually, it's right there. It's like right next to you. Yeah, I just I don't want this guy to hit me. I have like <laughs> 25 health. Oh, you're doing good. You have three more bottles up there. Yeah, but I I want to play like I mean it. <laughs> Justin doesn't go halfway ever. It's the thing that oh, I really okay. I really respect about him. He. Uh, oh no! Oh, I thought he was goes. dead. Uh, Sorry. Oh, dang it. Okay. Well, now I can just. It's for the glory and the honor. Oh, you got him. Oh, there he is. Nope. There he is. Get him. So I just realized that if someone's chasing you, you can charge up this giant smash attack, oh. and the AOE effect will get him. Yep. That's excellent. Pretty good. Now you got a new uh, a, a new escape plan. New strat. Yeah. 
pro strats. Yeah, I like that there's different primary weapons as well. I think, I, you know, when I I remember playing oh, the game, I don't... Oh, a lot happened right there. Oh. That was <laughs> very action-packed. Kablooey. Um, there's, there's a treasure chest there that's actually a bomb. Just to kind of fake you out. But yeah, I like that you have other... I, I mean, I knew there was different secondary weapons, but um, it's, it's really great to see that there, you can really change your tactic there's completely. There's a huge variety. There's a bunch of different, different shields. Primary and secondary Yeah, weapons. there's actually like a whole other armor set you can get for the game. Oh, awesome. Um, there's a lot of stuff that Dan can do. Um, and I you'll see, like the sword they get more varied as you as you go through, obviously. Um, but yeah, people who are familiar with the game are going to be pretty thrilled with the way everything kind of turned out. Oh, yeah. wait. I want to hit that bell with a hammer. Oh. Just because I can. <laughs> give it a give. A, Let's a see good. if I can break it. I believe in you. Uh, oh. Okay. It was a good hit. It was a good, good smash. Not quite enough. It was a good hit. All right. Back I to the sword. It is it is satisfying to hit those bells. Though. Oh, yeah. It is. Um, so okay. have we gotten... We're still after um, yes, you might want the next to, riddle. I think after we talk to Jack, or after you solve that riddle, you have to go back and, and just speak to Jack for a moment. Oh, what's, what is this? Uh, this is a life fountain. So oh, so yes, see please. Your, your life bottles up there are actually refilling. Oh, thank goodness. Look, 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 look. Yep, but they are finite, so it only might refill, like, you know, two or so, and then oh. it's done. Oh. So you got to be careful. So Give that's it for this level? More. That's it. Until you reload this level. Okay, gotcha. And then it'll be there again, but then you have to fight back to this area. you got to earn it still. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's good to know. Yep. Um, you gotta be. You got to be careful. you got to play... Carefully, slowly. Um, the more crazy you just kind of run in there, the more you do get your bony butt kicked. Yeah. So, um, but be careful. It can canonically, it works. Yeah. And then you're doing the daring dash right there. One of the abilities Dan gets. That's a good look. So if we solve, we've now solved that that riddle. Yep, we solved the elephant okay. riddle. I tolerate the moon and stars. I can't abide the sun. Banish me with torchlight, and you'll see me turn and run. Yeah. Mm, okay. Let's go check out that grate that you were just hanging out over. Oh, oh okay. that did I look was, suspicious. I just got there a little too early. Yep. Got it. He he wants to he wants to talk crap to you face to face, you know. <laughs> and I'm noticing face to face. we were talking about the new soundtrack, and uh, I feel like it just got a little bit more, you know, epic. And yeah, yeah that just kicked, kicked in, in there. Yeah. So Bob and Barn, who did the original, who composed the music for the original game, actually came back to orchestrate all the remaining music for the game. Um, and oh, it's yeah. all been dynamically mixed. So depending on what's happening, what the action's like in the game, um, it'll, I just it'll drop down there? Yeah, drop down there. Go. Okay. I, love the, I love the choir. Yes, it's uh. beautiful. It's beautiful, beautiful. It really just makes everything, it's, it's incredible. It's, you know, video game music sometimes can be that sort of, or music just in any medium is like that invisible thing that brings it to that next level, and it just feels like all the stakes have, have raised a little bit. Yeah. Now. The, the sound team working on this game have done an amazing job just mixing everything and making it sound as, as epic as you want it to be. Yeah. You know, it does feel like a, a grand adventure, which, you know, is, is befitting of Sir Dan over here. That's right. It's, a, it's also one of redemption. Yes. Good instincts. There you go. Okay, so you're Got on it. the right track. That's good. I have a hunch there will be more. Yeah, Lo and behold. There's a this window right there. What I like about this area too is that it's like a, a thematic change of pace from the upper, you know, hedge maze, yeah. and um, I feel like it, it seems like, you know, I haven't beaten the original '98 game, but I feel like. There's a lot of variety here uh -huh. already, just within this one stage. Yep. Oh, and just notice how you can you can see the stone on each of the walls in here. Like oh you yeah. You can see that you're kind of closed in. Yeah. Um, if we take a look at what this looked like back in the day, oh. um, you'll notice that like you know it's all just kind of black and dark because oh, well, the draw distance just wasn't there. We definitely should take a look. It just well, I I love that a lot of the stones actually like jut out of yeah. the wall. Yeah. There's so much character here. Yeah. yeah. Like you can see the roots from the trees above yeah. ground coming down. It is like pretty that. great. Yeah, let's uh, let's take a look after uh, this puzzle Blast. is solved. It took me ages to come up with that. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting frustrated. It's all right. You know, he gave it his best. Very well. Um, so why don't you head out of here and then we'll, um, we'll look back at the 98 original version of this puzzle. Got a quick jump. Return at once and I shall give Whoosh. you your prize. All right. Let's go back in time. Okay, so unveiling the path to um, 
to the underground area here. <laughs> there it is. There nice. it is. And the room looks a little smaller. A little wow. more claustrophobic. Um, yeah. Again, it feels very faithful to what I just did. <laughs> yeah. But like, man, you can you can so tell the difference. Yeah. The um, you know just the this, the way that those bricks were jutting out of the you know the texture. It just it's it's much simpler. You still it's still the same core puzzle, but. Um, Oh, and also, like, lined up the piece, but not not much yeah. in the way of feedback there. That's yeah. right. Yeah, and it looks like the pushing is a little bit easier in the new version, just kind of being able to, to maneuver it uh, side to side while you're pushing it forward. Yeah, yeah here it looks like you're locked in 90-degree yep. uh, angles, which is, like, you know, pretty pretty common for that era. And yep. then, yeah, just the, the fact that they added the little mini cutscene that indicates that you did something correctly like I feel like this if I played this back in 98 I would have been really frustrated because I wouldn't <laughs> you know would have known what was going on yeah absolutely and then even there once you got all three yeah, you place, did it. still nothing but then when you go in there Whoa. You can see, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I do like that absolutely yeah and there's your feedback right there after you pop out of it oh Thanks yeah you. okay let's Better jump one. back so I think we're close Okay. Oh, are we getting see. there? Yeah, Where you should go go back and tell back this way. Tell Jack what's up now that you solved this puzzle. Oh, I'll tell him what's up. Hey, Jack, your riddles are. I whack. got a bone to pick with this guy. Uh oh, Ooh. oh, there it is again. I love it. Doesn't get old. It probably does. <laughs> you think you're so clever, don't you? Yep. Here you are. Sir again, that's clever Justin. Clever. I always think he's so clever. I brought you free <laughs> passage through my maze. Find your own way out. Sir Dan still doesn't clocks. care. He's still looking around. He's just distracted eternally. It's like, okay, dude, that's the best way to defuse a blowhard like that is yeah. you just ignore him. Look at the texture on this guy. And yeah. Look at, like, like the th the modeling on that <laughs> face. Yeah. It's so good. Oh, man, I, I have a deep appreciation for the work you guys are doing here. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, that's all. The art team is astounding. All, all credit to them. Wait, am I going the right way? I think you are. So he's basically like, I'm done with you. Like, you just, you figure it out if you're so smart. Yep. <laughs> yep, you're doing great. What will it be this yeah. time? Going past here. There was an For good luck. For good luck, <laughs> yeah. of course. Yeah, sure. That was blocked. Make your statement. To the right. Right. Okay, there you Thank go. Thank you. It would have been a boring episode if I'm just <laughs> running in circles. Oh! Someone's oh, hitting me. That where, hedge, where did that come from? I think that, that hedge guy hit you. Yeah, it looks like they... Hedge guy? Oh, that thing? Yeah, that thing. I think oh it hit my you goodness. with something. Don't know. Let's, let's activate the Dan cam. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just like zooming yeah. in and out of the mouth, too. Yeah, the thing is, like, when you're, if you notice some of these guys you were hitting, you were actually getting um, bestiary entries as well. Oh, so, uh, cool. I, I'm such a sucker for that. Yeah, we have an entire bestiary in the game that's been freshly written. That's actually all new text. Oh, from, fun. Uh, from Chris yes. Sorrell, the original creator. So um, it just helped us bring it to life a little bit more. And now we have a chess puzzle. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the little pieces making noises, but <laughs> they've literally come to life. Yeah. Uh, well, it seems color coded. Uh, so if uh, I had to take okay, a guess, okay, okay. yellow goes on blue, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Ow, oh. ow, ow. The, the, rook's, ow, the rook ow. is not into it. <laughs> That's a rook, right? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Thanks. Yeah, I play video games, not, yeah. not not board games, guys. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Ow, ow. Ow, ow. Gotta, no, this is actually exactly how chess goes. I've, yeah. you know, I've, I've played a lot of it, <laughs> and it's usually oh, just about getting these four pieces into the color-coded spots. Yep. Yeah. Sw swinging blades at them. Yep. Pe people say chess is hard. Boy, come on. Yeah, I mean, come on. Just take a look at this. I mean, sure Dan can do it. Yeah. <laughs> I do really like the voices. Ooh. <laughs> I never. Ow. Look at go. that. You've done it. Got him. So is that going to conclude the level? Uh, is that, that a sound grounds? That is the end. All that, right. That is actually your entrance to the asylum right there, believe it or not. He's he's over he's overjoyed <laughs> with his with his own riddle solving ability. Well, uh, just a nice work. Um, Nick, thank you for, for joining us on an episode of PlayStation Underground. People don't have long to wait. Uh, it's gonna be out on PlayStation 4 on October twenty fifth. October twenty fifth, disc and digital. And if you're a huge medieval fan, man, check out that digital deluxe version. There is so much cool behind the scenes content in there. And a rad PS4 theme. And a rad PS4 theme, the whole soundtrack, it's it's an amazing deal. Um, I think it's like 39 and the standard is 29. Okay. 29. So um, it's just an awesome experience. If you've never played the game before, this is the perfect time to jump in. If you have, you're, you're gonna have a blast. Yeah, I'm excited, just in time for Halloween too. So, all right, well, thanks for joining us and thanks everyone for watching. That's Medieval. Thank you.